13 Reasons Why is actually by Jay Asner. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm... Why I keep on saying James Dasner is Jay Asher. But yeah, let's get back to the video. Hello everyone, it's Jordan. And today I'm going to be doing my book talk for 13 Reasons Why by James Dasner. Um, if you have not read this book yet, fair warning, this book contains spoilers, so if you have not read it yet, go ahead and exit out until you do read it, and then you can go back and watch the book talk after you read the book. But if you're wanting a spoiler-free review, I will link down my review that I'm going to write on my blog and I will link it down below. So first off, um, I rated um, 13 Reasons Why 5 out of 5 stars. Um, first I'm going to start with telling you my favorite quotes from the book like I normally do during a book talk. The first one is, you don't know what goes on in anyone's life but your own. <clears throat> and when you mess with one part of a person's life, you are not messing with just that part. Unfortunately, you can't be that precise and selective. When you mess with, when you mess with one part of a person's life, you are messing with their entire life. Everything affects everything. The next one, you can't stop the future. You can't rewind the past. The only way to learn the secret is to press play. And then, no one knows for certain how much impact they have on the lives of other people. Oftentimes, we have no clue, yet we push it just the same. The next one is, a lot of you cared, just not enough. And then, but you can't get away from yourself. You can't decide not to see yourself anymore. You can't decide to turn off the noise in your head. Then the next quote, you can't go back to how things were, how you thought they were. All you really have is now. And then, sometimes we have thoughts that even we don't understand. Thoughts that aren't even true. That aren't really how we feel. But they're running through our heads anyway, because they are interesting to think about. Then the next one, if you hear a song that makes you cry and you can't, or if you don't want to cry anymore, you don't listen to that song anymore. But you can't get away. From yourself. It's hard to be, and then the next one is hard to be disappointed when what you expected turns out to be true. And then the next one, when you try rescuing someone and discover they can't be reached, why would you ever throw that back in their face? And then a flood of emotions rushes into me, pain and anger, sadness and pity, but most surprising of all, hope. Then the next one is, I hope you're ready, cause I'm about to tell you the story of my life, more specifically why my life ended. And if you're listening to these tapes, you are one of the reasons why. <clears throat> and then I sat and I thought, and the more I thought connecting the events in my life the more my heart collapsed. And then I'm listening to someone give up. Someone I know, so someone I liked, I'm listening. But still, I'm too late. And then you can hear rumors, but you can't know them. And then that's why you did it. You wanted your world to collapse around you. You wanted everything to get as dark as possible. Then the next quote, 
I can't. You can't rewrite the past. And then because when you're posed, you know someone's watching you. You put on your very best smile. You let your sweetest personality shine. And then when the right moment appears, the key is to not let it pass. And then I left. I should have stayed. And then what you don't understand, you can make it mean anything. And then, because it may seem like a small role now, but it matters. And then, betrayal isn't one of the worst feelings. Oh no, betrayal is one of the worst feelings. And then, I hate not knowing what to believe anymore. I hate not knowing what's real. And then normally when a person has a stellar in image of another person's, of an, uh, a stellar image, another person's waiting in the wings to tear them apart. And then it may seem that every time someone offers you a handout, they just let go and you slip further down. <clears throat> and then Hannah wasn't my first kiss, but the first kiss that mattered. The first kiss was someone who mattered. And then everything seemed good, but I knew it had the potential to be awful. And then my heart and my trust were in the process of collapsing. And that collapse created a vacuum in my chest. And then if time was a string connecting all of our stories, that party would be the paint or the point where everything knocks up. And then the last two of my favorite quotes are, this was not a spur of the moment decision. Do not take me for granted again. And then the last one, this time for the first time, I saw the possibilities of giving up. I even found hope in it. <clears throat> Sorry, I was making sure it was still recording. Anyway, there were so many other quotes and 13 reasons why that were really meaningful and inspirational and motivational and that kind of taught you a lesson. So I had a lot more quotes and 13 reasons why that were my favorites. But if I told you all of them, we, were, we would literally be here forever. So, yeah. Like I said before, I rated 13 Reasons Why 5 out of 5 stars. Um, this book was amazing. I loved the writing. Um, I loved everything about it. But while it was amazing, the topic itself it was about wasn't very amazing. Um, so first of all... Um, let's see. I loved how real, um, Dastner made a fictional story and how he focused a fictional story around real life issues. Um, this book really focuses on on a more taboo subject, suicide, um, teen suicide to be more specific, but um, people need to understand the fact that it's still something we need to, need to talk to and it's something we need to educate the younger generations about so they know suicide isn't the other option and that people care and that people are here to help them. Um, <clears throat> so first of all I want to talk about all the 13 reasons so I really love the concept of ja or Dasner instead of having Hannah write a letter with the reason she committed suicide um that he did it on cassette tapes um so, like, each cassette tape, there were seven of them. So, the first six had 
one reason on each side, side A and side B, and then the seventh one only had the last reason. But I want to go through the 13 reasons really quick. So the first one, Justin Foley is Hannah's first kiss. Um, she meets him at the park. He's going to catch her on the slide, and they kiss. They don't even really make out or really anything it's just like an innocent kiss and he lies to his friends and tells them they did more so that kind of starts the slight shaming for hannah and then the second reason is alex Dandel, in order to get back at his girlfriend jessica davis he makes a list of who's hot and who's not and he said that you know, had the best you know what, and she was hotter than Jessica. So Jessica thought Hannah was fooling around with Alex, Jessica's boyfriend, and at Monet's where the, the three of them tend to like eat and hang out. She slaps her in the face, and yeah, that was the second reason and the third reason. Um, when Jessica hit her, that was the third reason. And then the fourth reason, Tyler Down um, takes pics of Hannah outside of her window, which she already doesn't feel safe at school because of the bullying and sexual assault and slut shaming, but now she doesn't feel safe at home either. And then the fifth reason, is Courtney Crimson um is one of those fake girls who acts nice to everyone and she's popular because she's so nice but she really is fake and backstabbing people um so once Hannah tells her that Tyler is taking pictures outside of her window Courtney's like yeah we'll set up a trap so then they pretend to do things to like trick Tyler down and then Courtney stabs Hannah in the back by telling the whole school that she had sex toys in her drawers in her room when she didn't. Um, so that also made the slut shaming a lot worse um, and the sexual assault as well um, and the bullying. And then the sixth read reason, um, when they were doing the dollar valentines, Hannah gives mats with Marcus and they plan to meet each other at Rosie's diner. And he's, he like makes her wait an hour already so she thinks she's getting stood up. And then to make it even worse, when he finally arrives, he tries to like touch her inappropriately and be all over her and she doesn't want that and then he like curses her out when she tells him no um and he only wanted to date her because of the slut shaming and thinking she was easy all because of Justin Foley and all the other guys who treated her the way they did um the seventh reason is Hannah ignored Zach Dempsey um, when he attempted to comfort her after Marcus, like, what Marcus did at Rosie's diner, and he got mad because she was ignoring him, so in one of their classes they had little bags where they put encouragement letters in for each person, and or like you pay like compliments stuff like that and that's kind of what Hannah looked forward to every day and what gave her hope because it made her day and that was really the only hope she had left and Zach for payback kind of stole the notes out of her bag where she thought she didn't get any um the eighth reason Hannah met Ryan Shaver in a poetry class and he published one of her personal poems in the school magazine and it was really really personal 
and in English classes all the students and the teachers critiqued it. So that didn't help with her self-esteem or anything like that. Um, 10, Justin Foley, back again um, at a party. His girlfriend Jessica gets really drunk. He wants to fool around, but she um, is too drunk, so he's like, okay, I'll leave you alone. And then he lets his best friend Bryce rape her, because Justin is also really drunk. Which, Justin, that's not an excuse for letting your best friend rape your girlfriend. And also, Hannah, before that, Hannah and Clay were in the room. And they had an argument, so then Hannah was, like, hiding in there when all that with Jessica and Bryce and Justin happened. So she witnessed the rape, and she feels guilty for not saying anything. Um, and then the next one, Reason 11, um, on the way home from that same party because Hannah was so drunk and upset, Jenny offers to give her a ride home and tells her she hasn't been drinking but then on the way home Jenny hits the stop sign but she says her father and her or her parents or whatever would kill her if they reported it um and Hannah said no we need to report it and Jenny was like no get out of my car so then because the stop sign was down a senior coming from the same party and an old man get in a wreck and the senior dies and gives blame for drunk driving when it wasn't his fault. It was because the stop sign was down. So Hannah also feels guilty because she witnessed that. Um, and then reason 12, Bryce Walker raped um, Hannah in the bath, in the hot tub at his party. Um, and that was kind of the moment where she decides to make the tapes because that was kind of the moment where she was like, I don't want to live anymore. And then 13, Hannah was kind of like, I'm going to give life one more chance. I'm going to go talk to my guidance counselor. And she kind of talks to Mr. Porter and she kind of has suicidal thoughts and she's like, I don't want to feel anything. I want everything to be over. I don't care about anything anymore. And she kind of hints to the rape. But Mr. Porter kind of tells her to move on and he lets her walk out of the office without even helping her. So then that same day, she commits suicide by taking pills in a bathtub. Um, so those were the 13 reasons. So while this is such a tough, tough, tough topic for anybody to write about, for anybody to read about, for anybody to talk about, um, I think it's important that we all read about it and start those conversations where younger people can know if they're being bullied, sexually assaulted, if they get raped whatever that there is help and people do love and care about them and that suicide is not the only choice they have um and i think this book while is not everything you need to know about suicide is a good way to start the conversation about suicide um also this book was very raw and unique, and some parts were really, 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 really hard to read. I was crying a lot of the time without even knowing it, but because of the tapes, you want to keep on turning the pages to see what the next reason is and what will be on the next tape. Um, and Clay was the perfect narrator for the story. His character was very relatable because I wasn't really bullied or anything in high school, but I wasn't one of the popular ones, so I only had a few friends like Clay did, which I was fine with that. And But I related to him a lot in that way. 
and I felt every emotion he felt. When he broke down crying, I broke down crying. I wanted to punch the other characters. I wanted to confront the other characters with Clay. I wanted to yell at the top of my lungs at parts in the book because uh, it made me so mad. But like Clay, I wanted to know why he was on the tapes and that's why I read it in like two sittings because I wanted to know why he was on the tapes. I was like, Clay, Clay's so nice. How could he be on the tapes, you know? So that's why I kept on turning the pages. And I loved that it switched back and forth between Hannah's voice on the tapes and Clay's telling the story. Um, it made it so realistic. Um, and horror finally real at the same time because while you're hearing Hannah's voice, you're feeling everything the other characters hearing the tapes are feeling. Like, oh, I should have done something. What could I have done? You're heartbroken. You're devastated. You get chills when you hear the tapes. Um, and also, it's really heartbreaking and horrific because you know she's already gone so while you want to save her you know you can't um and while listening to Hannah's voice on the tapes I wanted to punch all the characters they made me so mad I was like how can you treat somebody like that do you not have a heart do you not have a soul and then when you find they committed suicide because of things you did to them and you don't feel bad uh, I just wanted to yell and cry and scream at the same time. Um, but, you know, people think Hannah is a bratty character because she just wants to blame everybody and all that. And she's overreacting and all that. But, you know, like, well, Hannah blames other characters for different things they said or did to her. She also t says, like, I'm the one who chooses to commit suicide. I made that choice. Um, I made the choice to end it all. Um, this book is a really good lesson. Oh, also, before I say that, and Hannah, like, you never, she's not really overreacting. Um, you never know what somebody is going through and how they're going to react to different situations. Someone else could take a lot more than the next person, so, um, you never know, like, the, even if you say I hate your shirt, or like, oh, you look awful today, or like, you think you're saying the smallest thing, that's kind of a joke, that could be the last trial for somebody. Um, also, the one thing, flaw I found with the book you see all the reasons and all the things other people did to her, but you never see or hear about the mental state of Hannah Baker and what's going through her head. That's the only fault I really find with the book, and I think if Jay, James Das, Jay Dasner, I don't know why I said James earlier, and Jay Dasner, if you would have included, like, Hannah's mental health and what was going on in her head, I think we would have gotten to understand Hannah as a character and her character. Again, that's really the only flaw I saw in the book with the concept of suicide. Um, this book is a good lesson for everyone that every little thing you say, every little thing you do, every little look you give somebody, every backstabbing thing you do, every plan you cancel, every like thing you do or say could be somebody's downfall and or the last straw. Um, and also that everything affects everything and you don't know what people are going through so you should just be nice to everyone. I mean, Clay even says, like, 
Sorry everyone, I ran out of room on my camera, but I was saying, like Clay says, we have to treat each other better, and we have to tell each other we love each other more, and we have to look out for each other more, and maybe we'll save a life, and yeah, but 13 Reasons Why was amazing, and while it focuses on a taboo subject, maybe it will start the conversation, um, for talking to the younger generation that there are people who love them and that there is another option instead of suicide. But yeah, I rated it 5 out of 5 stars and it's definitely one of my favorite books of 2017. But yeah, comment down below what you thought about it. If you read it, I would love to talk to you. Subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And like this video if you liked my book talk. And I will talk to you all, you lovely laters, later, you lovely readers later. And look out for my talk comparing the TV show with the book. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Love you.